Hey guys, and welcome back to Bad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking Ultraist sunscreens, and I am so, so excited to bring to you a review which you guys have been asking for for months. Ultraist sunscreens are super affordable. They're drugstore to their core. They're also tried, tested, and independently verified, and they've got a huge hype around them online. I wanted to do this review for so, so long, but I wanted to order the products, try them, test them, give them a full wear test, so I see how they apply on the skin, and whether the hype that they have around them is actually justified. So, if you want to sit down, get your pen and paper ready, get a cup of tea, and we're going to talk Ultraist sunscreens and whether there's a space for them in your skincare routine. Ultraist as a brand is dermatologically led, so it's formulated by a dermatologist here in Europe who had the main ethos of wanting to bring sunscreen to the masses. So often we look at some of our favourite sunscreens, either from La Roche-Posay or some of our favourite Korean and Japanese um, brands, and they're actually quite expensive. Compared to a lot of the other products in our skincare routine, sunscreen can be a little bit on the pricey side. That's not accessible to everybody, and so Ultraist wanted to bring a mass market drugstore, super affordable, yet really beautiful formulated delivering verified protection product that everybody can enjoy. I am fully behind that. I think that's a fantastic mission statement and I'm fully on board with it. They also donate a portion of their profits to charity, specifically a charity in Africa that helps support people living with albinism, which is when you're born with reduced or in some cases very little pigment in the skin, making you much more prone to photosensitivity and sun damage. I love it when brands back up their ethos with, you know, with the facts, give over some cash and actually support some of these charities. It's a wonderful charity that's actually delivering something which clearly is in keeping with the brand which I absolutely love. They've got some great sustainability statements on their website which I'd encourage everyone to check out. On all around they just look like one of those really good egg brands that I absolutely love to see. But of course that's not worth anything if their products are a load of rot. So let's get into it and do some other testing. I ordered four of their main products. They do have some other ones but they're not accessible everywhere. I ordered these off a website called The Skin Clinic here in the UK. I think they only ship to the UK but you can order direct from the Ultraist website site as well. I've linked all of these below so if you do want to check them out in more detail or you do want to make a purchase the links are below. Let's start with their main product which is this, the Ultraist Dermatological Face Fluid. This is an SPF 50 and is designed to be the most lightweight of all their products. It's a fluid so it goes on as more of a lotion and I'll do a wear to patch test in a minute. It says it's non-comedogenic so it shouldn't clog your pores. I always take that with a pinch of salt because I've been broken out by non-comedogenic products in the past but this didn't. I've been using this for the past month and I've had no issues and no breakouts. It contains a hybrid of chemical and mineral filters which I love. There's going to be an explosion in these hybrid sunscreens in the next year and I think it's fantastic because we should be taking advantage of both technologies. But that's something to bear in mind if you want to avoid chemical sunscreens, that it didn't clog my pores and it went on beautifully. I'd say it's got a matte to slight, with a slight dewiness in terms of its overall finish, slight hydration so it's suitable for people with dry skin but it won't clog your pores. I absolutely love this product. It glides on, it's fragrance free and I'd say it's got that typical sunscreen scent to it if you're thinking about how it applies. These chemical filters do have a slight scent to them but nothing unpleasant. It goes on white, but you massage it into the skin and it disappears really quickly. On my skin tone, there was no ashiness, there was no white cast. Um, because it's a hybrid, I don't think that'll be a problem for many people unless you have really the darkest, deepest and richest skin tones where you might get some cast. But in terms of this, not at all. If you could see that, it gives a very slight sheen to the skin, but I actually think it gives a really nice look. You can use makeup, concealer on top of it, and it goes on really well. You might just want to leave it maybe five minutes to dry a little bit first before you apply your makeup. And overall, it's a great product. I'd say this is one of the more pricey. It's eight pounds. I mean, it's $10. It's not pricey at all. For a sunscreen, for a face sunscreen that applies this well, that's not pricey at all. But it is the most expensive of the products we're going to talk about today. It includes niacinamide, which is great. A B vitamin, it can be calming. It can also help prevent breakouts and even out the skin tone and texture as well. So that's a nice addition. So be mindful of that because you might want to cut out some niacinamide in the rest of your routine if you're using this product and you've got it in this one. I love this product. Five stars on the UVA rating. The UVA is what gives the um, anti-aging benefits. So those are the rays that age you. It's an SPF 50 on the UVB spectrum. Those are the ones that burn you traditionally. Um, the five star system is something we use here in Europe. It's PA and there's different things across the world. But I'm going to leave you a link below that explains that if you do want a little bit more detail. But you get fantastic UVA and fantastic UVB protection from this. And I am sold. This is a five star ding, ding, ding product. Beautiful. Now we're going to move on to one of their, let's go for their cheapest. Let's go from one of the pricier to the cheapest. This is like bulk by perfection. So this is their sunscreen SPF 30. This is a cream. Why I love this, £4 for this amount of product. 
like six dollars for this amount of product it's tried tested and verified so you know you're getting great protection and it's uv um it's spf 30 you the uva um, is five star again so you're getting fantastic level of protection quite a few people online have roasted ultraist for not offering an spf 50 plus product they do an spf 30 option they do an spf 50 option i actually don't like spf 50 plus as a thing i don't think it's adding anything to our understanding of the products what does that plus actually mean it's really just a bit of marketing because here in the uk and across the european union you're not allowed to sell some protection above an spf of 50. the rationale behind that is because actually the spf only really delivers part of the story you need to apply it correctly and you also need to apply the right amount to get that protection so they felt that giving people at spf 100 were giving people a bit of a misleading confidence that, that product's really protecting them where actually if they're not applying it right or frequently enough it wasn't giving anywhere near that protection anyway so they limited it to an SPF of 50, which I think is more than enough. I actually use SPF 30 day to day. I find it applies better on my skin, doesn't leave any ashiness or white cast. It's just a better, easier product generally in SPF 30. SPF 50 if I'm really exposed to the sun. So I don't like that people are roasting them for not having an SPF 50 plus, where to me, it just doesn't mean anything anyway. So that's my take on it, but you might have a different view. Share it in the comments below if you want to. This is an SPF 30. I love, love, love this because you can bulk buy it, you can use it um, without, you know, without worrying that you're, you know, using too much and the price is a little bit um, off for you. And it goes on as a thicker, much thicker cream than the lotion that we just talked about. In terms of how it applies, um, I'd say it does leave a little bit more of a white cast to the skin. Certainly not. You just have to work it in that little bit more to make sure it goes on completely clear. But after you've worked it in, I'd say it disappears without a trace. You can get a little bit more dewiness in terms of the finish to this product than you do to the lotion and it's much more hydrating. So I'd say this is a great option if you have super dry skin and you want a moisturizing product that could almost act as a moisturizer, this could be the one for you. It gives a nice light dewy finish. Obviously you could powder over it if you want to mattify that before you then put some um, makeup or concealer on, but it works really well. This product again is that hybrid between the uh, mineral and the chemical filters, which I love. It's unfragranced, which is fantastic if you're looking for an unfragranced option. And actually, it doesn't smell of anything at all. So it's not got that real chemically smell that some unfragranced sunscreens can have. And this, again, I'm going to go out and I'm going to give it a five-star ding, ding, ding rating. The reason I'm giving this a five-star, even though I don't think I liked it as much as the other one in terms of my skin type, is I think this is a great option for people with drier skin types. It's also got panthenol in there. So that's going to calm and soothe the skin if you've got any redness or irritation. They're just beautifully formulated. I would recommend people reach for this lotion if you have slightly oilier skin and go for the cream if you have drier skin, but that's personal preference. They would actually both work for everybody. Now, let's talk about this product. This is the Ultraist Sun Spray. This, if you want to spend a pound extra, $5.99 instead of $4.99 for the cream, you can get it in a spray formulation. I'm not a huge fan of spray or aerosol sunscreens. I think not only are you spraying yourself, you're spraying everyone. That person on the sun lounger behind you, they're getting a good dose of it as well. It kind of goes everywhere. You can't get that targeted precision. And they're usually packed full of alcohols, which can be quite drying if you've got dry skin anyway. This is the same. It's got a really, really nice, burst if I give you that it's got a really nice um spray on it which is fine again it's unscented so it doesn't have that really cloying like summery smell that you can sometimes get with um sunscreen <laughs> sprayed that everywhere sorry about that um in terms of how it works I'd say fantastic if you have slightly oily skin you know that little bit drying that you'll get from the alcohol in here isn't too bad and it applies beautifully because alcohol just makes everything apply so much better but you've got to be cautious of that drying and um, I like the level of protection you get I just don't think you can be as guaranteed of the protection with an aerosol product as you can with a cream product because the application is just a bit more subject to human error so i'm not a huge fan of that I, overall i'm going to give this product a three out of five it's a ding mm product it's not it's bad it's not bad you get the protection you're getting a great price point and you're getting a nice formulation i just think why would you have the extra drying alcohol where you don't need it why do we reach for aerosols i know they're convenient maybe if you're chasing your child around the beach and you're just desperate to get it on them and you're spraying them this could work really well for you i just think the cream applies so beautifully and disappears without a trace do you really need that aerosol that invisible aerosol option probably not the only people i think this could be really good for is if you have really deep skin tones then this could 
could work because it will be invisible. It won't show any white cast or ashiness or that lavender hue that you can sometimes get with other products. So that could work for you. But again, I just find it's a little bit drying and I don't really like spray technology. So three out of five for this one. Now, finally, I've got one surprise product I'm going to share with you that isn't just a sunscreen. It's out there, Sunscreen Plus. This is at a different price bracket. All of those I've shared with you have been super affordable. Drugstore, amazingly priced. This is their anti-redness and pigmentation product. This comes in at $11.99. So it's a totally different price bracket to the others that are super affordable. This is still not a bad price point. But this is designed to work to correct some of the redness that you might have in your skin, whilst also giving you an SPF protection of 50. I love the fact that you've got a product with a really good SPF in there that's also going to help correct some of that pigmentation. It's going to take down that redness. So in here, you've got Centella Asiatica, you've got Calendula, which is a fantastic botanical, which again, just takes down any inflammation on a redness or sensitivity in the skin. You've got Panthenol that we spoke about earlier, which is just going to be calming and soothing. This could be a sensitivity or redness prone person's dream SPF. It goes on as green, which if I show you there, a little I find goes a long way, which is again, a little bit problematic when it comes to sunscreen because you want to use a lot to get the protection. So I'm a little bit confused about this, but you put it on, it goes on as green, and then it's got, turns into a tint. So it gives a very, very light tint. Now, in terms of people with lighter skin tones, this tint could be really nice and act as a BB cream. The green offsets with the redness, if you're redness prone, I really like that. I do think this is gonna be problematic to work with people who have deeper and richer skin tones, because that tint isn't gonna apply for everyone. And it goes on as sort of like a semi-matte to dewy finish. All of them, I'd say, have a matte with a bit of dewiness to them sort of finish. So somewhere in between, which is quite nice. In terms of this product, I'm actually gonna give this a one out of 10. I think the reason for this is it's messy. Um, you use less than you should, I think, because you don't want that full coverage because it's quite actually quite an aggressive tint in terms of the level of coverage you get. I like the ingredients in here. I think it's formulated well with the calendula, with the centella asiatica and the panthenol to come and soothe the skin. But I just think the tint is a bit... It's only going to be working for certain skin tones, and I don't see why you need it when you've got some great you know, non-white cast options that you can then put your favourite products on top. I saw where they were going with this. It's a bit messy. And overall, I'm just not a huge fan. I'm going to give this a one out of 10. It's the priciest as well. So it's just, and it just makes a mess. And I don't like, no, this is, this was a firm pass for me. The rest are a firm favorite. So overall, Ultraist, what do I think? I love them. I adore them as a brand. I love the ethos. I love the giving back to charity. The price points are to die for. It's about time, I think, that brands accept that sun care isn't optional. Everyone needs it in their routine, and it's really great that people have an affordable, yet really nice, almost luxury feel product they can reach to for around £5. That is so phenomenal. I love that. And even with that price point, they're able to give back to charity. So it's just all around phenomenal. I would definitely reach for the lotion if you have oilier skin, the cream if you have drier skin, and if you're chasing your kid around the beach, then go for the aerosol. It'll work really well, but I'm just not as sold on that as the other two. I think the redness one, it's okay. I just don't think, this is the one that got a load of hype. I find it really difficult to use. I wanted to use less than I think I should have used for it because I didn't want that full, full coverage look. And so it's a bit more subjective as to who it will work for. And it's probably the one I give a firm pass to. It's also the most expensive. So overall, not a fan. The other two, oh, rush out, buy them. Now, it's rare I say that, but honestly, your skin will love you for it and you're getting a really affordable option wherever you are in the world guys i hope you're staying safe and well leave me a comment what your thoughts are you gonna try any of these out leave me a comment below i'm sending you lots and lots of love take care bye